Okay, so my talk is called Web3 Lost in Translation. When Vicky asked me to speak today, I said yes right away. But maybe I should have thought at least twice. So what am I actually talking about? It's always something you should consider if you agree on getting onto a stage, so you should have a plan. But I had the feeling we basically already heard everything about Web3. No, I'm doing this now for two and a half years, and we have seen so many presentations, we have been, seen so many talks, and there's everything it feels like has been talked about already. So I was wondering, what am I actually going to talk about? And, and let's be honest, you know, let's assume you're all interested in Web3. We are a tiny, tiny fraction of people who care about Web3 and all the ideas behind it. It's tiny. And the more we talk, it feels like we're losing everyone else. So the normal people don't care about Web3. For them, it's still like, what the heck? Who cares? And the more we talk, I sometimes have the feeling we're actually losing people. And they're really lost in translation. I'm not sure if you know the movie, but Bill Murray is in Tokyo and has no idea what the director is talking to him because he is in Tokyo to record a whiskey commercial. And he feels totally lost in Tokyo. And I think that's what most people feel like when they hear what we talk about. So how could we change that? And maybe I could have also named my talk, why would I want to send an email when I can just call? And to be honest, this is exactly how people feel when we talk about Web3. You know, why the hell should I do anything with this? Why should I send an email if I can just call? This is something that people told me 25 years ago. It doesn't make sense to use email. I can just call. We had the same discussions with mobile phones and everything over and over again. So I thought, what am I actually going to talk about? And I have 30 minutes, and I thought, I talk about 13 points. I promise you it's the most boring talk, at least visually, because it's really just 13 points. And it's about the emotions that we all have when we go and enter Web3. Those are the emotions that we all either went through recently in the last two and a half years, or if you enter Web3, I'm going to prepare you for all the emotions that you're going to experience over the course of the time. And the first one we're all experiencing is ignorance. When you enter that space and when you talk about it, you're not even getting a reaction. People just don't care. They ignore the idea and your thoughts and everything that you're talking about. I've experienced that when I bought my first Bitcoin in 2013. People looked at me and everyone ignored it around me. I was so insecure, I sold it again with a loss. I shouldn't have done that. But, you know, ignorance is the first thing everyone is going to experience. And if you're already in Web3, for a while, you went through all of those emotions. So for you, it's a little therapeutic uh, session here because we all feel the same and we went through all the same. The second emotion and the second reaction we're all seeing is disbelief. Why the hell should I do anything with this? I don't think it's useful for anything. I can't do anything with it. It doesn't make much sense, actually. So what the heck? Insecurity, that kicks in. The more you talk to people, the more insecure you get because everyone has an opinion on it and it's most of the time not what you would like to hear. So people tell you why it's stupid, why it's not working, why you might be wrong, etc. So it's very easy to become insecure. So you need to get comfortable with the feeling of insecurity. So be ready for this. The more you get into it, the more you understand, the more excitement you will see. Because suddenly you see all the possibilities that these new technologies can bring to you, that can bring to your 
business model that you can think of new ideas of doing things that have been done in the past always like this and suddenly you can do it in a new way so suddenly you get excited and that's great and once you get excited you know you, you might be on fire and you might get other people excited but too much excitement is leading to a hype and this is what we experienced in the last two years and I don't know one when we were peak hype it feels like we're already going down for one and a half years but let's say last year in May everything freaked out everyone was asking me which nft should i buy this is cool i need this let's do this the hype was so big so after excitement comes hype and then you should be really cautious because hype is never lasting after hype we're seeing decline and decline means people get insecure again is this really the right thing? Is this working? And the people who got in last are the first ones who are getting out again. Because they came in maybe for the quick money, they didn't believe in the technology and all of those things. So decline comes after every hype. And after decline comes depression. And it feels again like you're totally lost. And everyone who is in that space, I think, can relate to this. And maybe we will see a hype again, but we will probably see depression again. And that's a really tough time. And I think nobody who is really spending their time with Web3 full time would say it has been a great experience in the last six to 12 months because it's really tough. It feels really depressive because everything that you thought in the past few months seems to disappear. Business models you thought of might be great, probably not that great. People are pulling out of something. They don't like it anymore. People start talking bad again. They, they tell you, I knew this before. Everything you're saying, you know, was stupid anyways, etc. And that's tough. And how do you get through this period of time when nobody cares anymore? when it feels like this is really dumb. And I think we all went through this. But I think, and let's get back to the positive side, we are through the worst at the moment. After depression comes kind of confusion. Is this still right? Is this not right? What, what makes sense of, of all what I believed before? What doesn't make sense? So, you know, people are confused, not really knowing, should I spend my time in there or do I become an AI expert now? So suddenly on LinkedIn, you could see that every Web3 expert became an AI expert and just switching to this because, oh my God, I probably can't make any money in there anymore. So what else do I do? And I can totally relate to that because it's difficult. Suddenly nobody cares about what you're talking about anymore and you need to you know, make a living. So where else can you do it? So you get kind of confused. And then comes reflection. After the confusion, you realize, ah, maybe the hype was good for something and the depression was also good for something because after depression, it becomes much clearer when you start reflecting what is interesting, what might stay over long term, what is really solving a problem. An NFT that makes a person rich is not probably making a big difference into the world, but what are the real things that we can solve with new technology. And this is great after depression because it gets much clearer later on and you start reflecting on what's interesting, what's not, what are business models that might work long term. And you also need some hope. You need the hope in the dark hours that things get better again. And once you reflect it and you understand there's something in it. It's interesting, there will be new things moving forward. You start hoping again that you went through the worst. And you hope that more and more people will now finally understand all of those ideas. And after hope, there comes realization. You realize what might be working, what's not working. You might adjust your business model. You might find new ways on doing things etc. And 
the last point, and this is basically what I want to let you leave this session with, is optimism. And I think that's the point in time where we are right now. Everyone who's still here is optimistic about what we're doing. We're optimistic that these new technologies will lead to something, that we can change something, that we're still interested in what we're doing, and that there are tons of ways of doing things in the future that we couldn't have done things before. So that's, I think, what's the unifying thing for all of us here in this room and for everyone exhibiting over there. We are optimistic that we're onto something, that there's something that we really can develop further. And we didn't go through all of those emotions in the last two years without really you know, sticking into it and being optimistic that there will be a reward moving forward. So I ask you to be optimistic as well, be open-minded, have a lot of discussions over here, and don't be afraid. You will go through a lot of different states of emotions in the future again. We all have been there, and we will probably all be there once again. And guess what? You can still call people if you want. So you don't have to do all this fancy shit, but it's maybe interesting to do some things. Look at something that could be interesting to you, that could push your business forward, that could solve a problem that you might be interested in solving with new technologies. So I really encourage you being open-minded and have a great time over here. Thank you very much. And if you would like to connect, this is my LinkedIn. And thanks for listening to me for this little therapeutic session here today.